Hello and welcome to the next part of this series, the computer animation, and how to make 3D animations on a computer using a program called Cheetah 3D for Mac OS X. So, last time I showed you the basics. Because this stuff's pretty cool, you gotta get more advanced into it. So let's continue. Let's open up a new Cheetah 3D project. Alright, we're gonna be doing some of the more advanced modeling settings. So we're going to do what we did before. We're going to get a relief polygon, zoom out a little bit. Now this is assuming you've seen the previous video, so you, if you haven't, you might want to get the basics under your belt, unless you're already somewhat familiar with this and you just want to dive into the good stuff. But this won't be the super advanced stuff yet, like what I do, but we'll be getting there, so don't worry. So right now, by default, we have this sort of mountainish type texture look. So, how do you modify it besides just making it, you know, taller and shorter and wider and all that stuff? Well, if you want to make it, like, deeper, like a canyon, you got to use some of the modeling features. So, what you do is you click on the little icon in here, and it's highlighted in red, so you know you've selected it. So, double-click it to go into editor mode, and then you get these little circles around here. So, then you get this grid, which is a bunch of points you can select. So what we would do is, you can right-click, in this contextual menu, you can go up to Selection, which is at the top, and then you have a bunch of selection options. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, gazillion options here. So let's do, uh, let's do Loop Select. So then you can select, you know, multiple lines at once, and hold down the Shift button to... Keep selecting them at once. See if you just don't hold down the shift button. I'll show you. I'm not holding the shift button now. And if I click, it'll remove everything else. So I'm just going to undo that. Now I'm back in this. Selecting these. Alright, good. Now when you're doing this, make sure you're in select mode. By pressing the arrow up here. By default, you're in that. So when you're in select mode, you're allowed to select the points. So now that we've selected the points, go into move mode. Zoom in a little bit here and drag the green arrow downwards. As you can see, everything starts to go down. Pretty cool. So yeah, this is simple movement. You just group a bunch of, you know, grid objects together. You move them up and down. That's what this grid is for. It's for selecting numerous points on an object, or polygon. So, there's way more than just that, of course. So if we get a different object, Let's delete this one just by pressing the backspace or delete key from the object browser once it's highlighted. Go into Polygon. And let's choose... Let's go into Splines, actually. This is where you can make some more advanced stuff. And let's choose Cog. So now you have this green liney thing. But this is just like kind of a border. So when you see this green line thingy and you render the video or picture this is all you get you're just gonna get black because there really is nothing you gotta add something to it so I showed you creating a spline you just open that up and choose which one you want so then what goes with the spline is a creator so we're gonna click that and we're gonna choose extrude so it makes the object look three-dimensional so then down here you can see there's a cog the camera and the extrude so to get the extrude to work you take the cog drag and drop it onto the extrude and now if you look here this cog is three-dimensional kinda looks like a gear that's all nice you can double click on it to get its editing features and of course this editing is a little more advanced because the points are all over the place but just by dragging you can screw the whole thing up but that's very unprofessional-ish So to get out of the point mode, you see when you double click on it, we're in point mode. And you can go into edge mode or polygon mode, but object mode is what lets you like move it around and such. So we're going to stay in that. So now we have this. How do we change it? Well, if you select the spline down here, and we actually get out of editing mode, so I'm actually going to undo those changes. So now I've selected this and I'm out of editing mode. Just by hitting Command Z, undo, or you can go to edit. Undo or redo. 
So after that, going in here. And we will go to the properties here, which will let you change settings for the spline. You can change the teeth, make it go down, and as you can see, it changes here. And you can change the radius, all that good stuff. Let me just tweak this a little bit. So now we made like this spiky looking gear thing. And that's all good. So yeah, cogs, th those are the basic ways of modeling cogs. Of course, you can still, you know, scale them by going up here to the modes. Scale. Make it flat. Change the extrude amount. If you set it down to, if you set it up, or technically down since it's negative, negative 9.9, it gets thicker. And if you set it closer to zero, it'll actually be completely thin. So now it is completely thin, and there would be no side view, really. Technically, yeah, that's what you would see. It's really thin there. So that's editing a cog. So splines and extrudes. We learned that you can take a spline from here and add a creator to it. One more quick one. This is really cool. Text. Select text. So then here, let's rotate the camera by using the rotating tools up here. I have the text selected, and it's in the properties. You click on the text thingy here. It'll expand it so you can type something in. I'm going to type in an Apple logo and type Mac. And you can choose your fonts. It gives you your system font library. So as you can see, it says Mac. But once again, you're not going to be able to see it in the render unless you add a creator. So let's go to Creator, and we'll do a polyplane this time. Works the same way, drag the text over the polyplane, and there you go. It's solid. So there's text. So when you render that, there you go. Shows up. Pretty cool. And of course, there's a lot of other modeling things you can do, like in a ball. Now, to get that grid thing, those little squares are called sectors. You change them in here sections, parallel, longitude. The more you have, the smoother it'll appear. And you'll have more of these. So if you go into select mode, you can select multiple points, multiple sections. You can even drag around to make it easier. And if you delete, it'll actually remove them from the circle. And then, of course, you can use the moving tools to extrude them from the circle. You can use other options in here, like extrude. This is like a real extrude. So it like pops it out like that. So there's lots of editing modes by right-clicking on the sectors or sections. You get the selection options, but you also get all these modeling editing tools. Some of them I don't even know how to use that. There's so many. And, of course, you can rotate and stuff. Now, I know we're kind of making, like, a totally random object here, but we can make actually some real stuff later once we get more into it. This is just to show you the functionalities of the tools, but later we will actually model some stuff and work with lighting and stuff. Lighting I'll probably do next when we actually model stuff. This is just showing you the functionality of the tools and some basic modeling things, but it will get more advanced, no doubt. So thank you for watching. See you next time.